Hi, welcome back and um, it's a glorious day outside and I'm about to go and uh, go and find a elusive track and footpath that has escaped me and by that I mean I did attempt to cross some more east to west weather called a day on that I wasn't prepared to test myself or my um, endurance anymore at 52 so I called it a day and um, yeah so basically I still have the east to west to do but I have a cunning plan and that plan is to do it in one foul hit that is to start at five in the morning and bomb burst the whole trail from east to west it will be, as uh, you probably probably gathered by now, going to be in good weather conditions, similar to today. And um, yeah, if I get this um, navigational bit of um, work done on this trail, it will simply be me plodding out the hard miles rather than exploring, finding and trying to navigate um, trails that I'm pretty much guessing by looking on the map people don't frequent very much they are in existence and they are mapped but I can honestly imagine people wouldn't take this route quite simply because the way you saw me do it to get to Havana Wood you didn't see the amount of bushwhacking I had to do to get to um, the point where I could cross the actual open bit of moorland and I think most people would probably turn tail. But having said that, like I said, um, you know, the, the devil makes work for idle hands. I'm home alone, as I've just stated. So I'm going to use this time and opportunity to get on my push bike and cycle there. I don't have a car at my disposal. And there is one little caveat with that. I've got to be pretty swift about it because I've got to get back home and get ready for my shift at work so you know I'm going to have to start thinking about making a move so we'll see how this pans out so as for a kit just basically I'm just taking a compass map obviously I've got to try and find my way uh, to this particular path and trail I've got a litre of juice um, I've got a can of pop as a treat I've got some nuts because I'm trying to I'm trying to actually go a little bit more healthy um, at the moment and there is a reason about for that. I've got a charge block because I'm always out of charge on my phone even though that charge block there only gives me about 20 or 30 percent even when that's charged up. Sun cream, a hat, um, a hoodie and obviously because I'm going to be cycling on roads, a high vis and obviously an old rucksack and there she is the uh, trusty steed it's a rally um, I don't know what it actually is it's a cruiser Pacific cruiser or something of that style but um, if you're wondering what that is there I'm not actually gonna say for health and safety reasons but don't do it but um, you know you could probably figure out why that's there but uh, like I said don't do it it's uh, you know extremely dangerous health and safety and all that but um yeah that's my ride and it's a nice uh, pleasant bike to ride i should be going on the roads i won't be taking the lanes because quite simply i want to get there you can see it's an absolutely gorgeous day but i don't like being on the roads i prefer to be on the lanes so when i get the opportunity i want to scout out another piece of woodland i will actually be turning off there I've just stopped here to uh, adjust my rucksack and uh, I've just been greeted with fast food cartons, energy drinks, sweet and chocolate wrappers all along here. Um, you know, it's sad to, you know, see it there. I don't have the capacity to carry it with me now, but um, if I'm passing back this way, I shall pick it up. Well, I've just been overtaken by a cyclist, a uh, fully clad cyclist, yeah, you know, expensive carbon fiber, race bike and all the uh, business and he's really hurtling along in stark contrast to me in boots combats and a running top and <laughs> I've got my glasses on because boy 
it stops the flies hitting your eye when literally shoot out of gateways it's one of those hot days but yeah I'm not one of those uh, cyclists that uh, you know clad myself in uh, all that paraphernalia but um, you know that's not me being you know disrespectful it's just that's not my style but uh, yeah I'm riding a kind of like uh, American style beach cruiser and that kind of suits me and suits my philosophy on life nice and slow sit up and just cruise the roads and look over the hedges and enjoy the ride rather than try to get somewhere fast well i've made it to uh, the woodland and i'm uh, just having a quick little look um, it's not somewhere I'm supposed to be but I'm just having a little look see see what the atmospherics of this place is like I know nothing about it it's reasonably close should I say five miles from my place by push bike um, and I have a lot of footpaths that run past this woodland but not through it um, so this is my first little unofficial look-see I can't go too far because I've got my bike and rucksack parked away and as you can probably hear I'm pretty close to a road just on this particular corner of the wood so I'm gonna make myself um, a little bit more less visible because I'm not exactly tactical oh I'm wearing a hat because the Sun was blaring and um, yeah I'm just gonna have a little look around so there is actually a hedge line here and my thoughts were if I'm doing a hike I could get somewhere I could possibly just actually do an overnighter en route through the footpaths and my initial thoughts are yes I can get away to do it just by this actual hedge my thoughts are if I hear people I have the opportunity to exit extremely swiftly and I'm seeing little areas I could stick a bivvy up in here and get out to the road and be back in uh, should we say the normal legal routes that you can use so if I can use that term but as you can see it's a lovely woodland it's midweek so I'm not in any real danger I would have thought of being discovered and being challenged and told to leave which I would very promptly and apologetically um, do so but as you can see there's a trackway there and if I spin you around there's a trackway here following this hedge line which goes deeper into the woods and a substantial way away from the road it is quite a large wood block so I'm just gonna have a very quick see up there but I'm not going to be exploring too too far because I've already seen enough here where I could actually get away and get a bivy up get my head down and be on the trail six o'clock in the morning before anybody be around there are multiple trails and I'm not raising my voice because I you know I've got crop fields around me I don't know who's around and you know I'm not drawing attention to myself but this is well trodden you can see that so somebody is actually using this uh, wood block you know even if it's for their own private use um, it's I would say too close to the road to be used for field sports because obviously you have a legal requirement even with a shotgun that you can't be near a road so whether this has just been bought as a private use wildlife um, reserve and you know somebody's just you know bought it for their own enjoyment fair play and um, I'm obviously not going to give the location to this woodland away because um, like I said I've got a very small corner mapped out now where I could get a bivy down get my head down and continue on my way and it might sound selfish but in this day and age if you do find treasures like that it's kind of best to keep them to yourselves and keep yourself and the location under the radar 
Well, I've got some stunning views here. I've just started climbing a gradient on my uh, push bike. And this will be the last arable crops or arable land I will see. Because as you can see up there, moorland. And uh, that's where we're heading to. Well, not quite that bit, but that type of ground, open moorland. There we go. That is absolutely stunning. I haven't got too much uh, or further to go before I hit the wood block. And I'll get under some shade and I'll sit and have a can of coke. A few uh, nuts from my uh, emergency supplies, should I call them. And then, um, you know, I'll start getting my information together from that point for this track and footpath. I know it seems a lot of effort to do this and I could have waited till I had a car but um, I've kind of you know made the best of it by scouting that little bit of woodland where usually I sail past it either walking or in the car and don't give it a second thought or not in the sense do I have time to have a quick little poke around in there. Um, yeah so I'm glad I've done that and I've already got my mind uh, shall we say in top gear on how that's going to be part of some of my uh, legs or roots when I'm walking or hiking. So yeah, I'm gonna start getting uh, on now and um, let's get somewhere I can have a, a drink, rehydrate and start making a plan of action. Oh, there's a nice uh, stream here or you could possibly classify it as a very small river just coming off the moor here and I've just spent a few moments looking to see if I can see fish. Um, I believe there is a trout in here, but um, I've been unable to see any yet. But um, yeah, it's really nice here. As you'll see in a moment, um, I'm uh, pretty high on the moor ground now, or moorland. But as I pan you around, you'll start to see the wood block in question. And I promise you, this is no small uh, wood block. You can walk around there totally lost for uh, a good portion of time if you're uh, a little bit, shall we say, navigationally challenged. And uh, yeah, if you lose your signal in there, you have to revert back to find the edge of the wood and basically work your way around the outside till you come to a track. Well, it was a good call to bring the uh, um, hat because I tell you what, it's absolutely redders now. And um, yeah, um, if you were, if you don't wear glasses, um, you'd have to be wearing some sort of eye protection because if you're bombing along these lanes, you've got literally flies, bees, everything just banging you in the face. <laughs> so uh, yeah, eye protection needed in these lanes anyway, in weather conditions like this. I'll just come down that little track there because I'm actually now in the woodlands or forestry and you can see my bike parked up there I'm gonna grab a can of pop out of my bag and it looks like somebody's tried to do a bit of uh, should we say very basic bushcrafting or shelter building which is all good fun but um, I need a drink and somewhere in here I should imagine a couple miles in is a track that I'm looking for. I'm going to start consulting the maps and uh, the Cornwall County Council maps to see if I can pinpoint it rather than me just cycling around these woods aimlessly. Well I don't have uh, any useful internet service here in this part of the wood. I did pick it up when I was last in here further up so I'll have to try there. But I'm consulting an old OS map. Now the thing with uh, old OS maps and wood blocks and their tracks, they change believe it or not. Wood blocks grow so you end up with trees where there weren't trees on the map and obviously they get cut down and uh, it doesn't look what they should do on the map because what was there as a wood block or a shape of a wood block can be cut down so you have to take that into consideration and forestry tracks do get added to and they do lose their status as uh, woodland grows 
and obviously it takes time before the trees can be harvested so those tracks might not be used and they get overgrown in themselves so i've got an old map i'm trying to uh, get my you know bearing shall i say from it um i've got a rough idea i'm gonna just take my can of pop pack all my stuff and everything away and then we'll have a uh, a go at this the bike will enable me to cover ground faster in here that's the only blessing if i do find the track um what i'm gonna do is just dump the bike somewhere in the wood block here out of sight out of mind go and do the recce on the footpath and then come back if i can't find it this way my other option is to tackle it from the reverse way back in which is a recognized easy um, lane so i should be able to find that way and make my way back this way but we'll give it a go let's see where we are it's all part of the adventure if you ever make it uh, to these woods there is one massive danger here and um, you know the sensible may understand the point I'm trying to get across the adventurous and the silly and the foolhardy may not but um, take my warning and heed it don't mess about with what I'm about to show you or even think of anything stupid like uh, climbing over the fences or anything like that bit of an understatement and I'll bring you around it's fenced off and there's a steel cage on top but if you look down there it's a massive drop this was a very very old mine and from here it is just one dark chasm abyss all the way down I would say you know they measure they used to measure these mines I don't know if they still do in fathoms but I would say uh, that's uh, pretty goddamn deep in any case and like I said don't mess about with this if you ever find your way in the woods stay well well clear come and have a little look by the uh, fence but don't go anywhere near it do not go past the fence line it's there for a reason your safety and obviously it would ruin your day if anything happened and somebody would have to risk their life to go and get you or what was left of you so yeah you know you know quick safety warning don't mess about with uh, mine shaft here in mine shafts in general not just cornwall anywhere stay well clear well I'm on the forestry tracks and I think I've got a sense of direction or some sort of navigational purpose to follow um, or route shall I say but um, yeah a lot of these uh, trees probably are due to be felled and a lot of the tracks you know don't seem to represent what is actually on the map i.e. like I uh, alluded to they're kind of getting a little bit shall we say uh, you know nondescript so, you know, I'm going to do my best. Um, it's a bridal way, so I should be able to cycle out most of the other way out of the woods. And then it becomes a footpath. But if I can see a clear line of sight to where I want to go to, that's good enough for me then to uh, say that I can do this leg, you know, without any navigational, um, shall we say, uh, forethought. I can just turn up, do like I said to you the bomb burst the whole trail get to this point and go yeah right I can see that on the map that's where I've got to be um, see a point in the distance and go for it following obviously a footpath but um, yeah I'm going to continue on here and um, yeah let's hope this works out for me it's a long cycle home if it didn't but like I said at least we found that uh, little bit of a wild camp spot in that other wood the thing is with these um Pine forests, lumber forests, they do seem to harbour a lot of insects and that's probably because the ground just gets to be a little bit, shall we say, uh, wet and damp but um, yeah, I'm scanning, I'm continually looking for these tracks. Right, I'll let you see what it looks like up front. And point in question, my map doesn't suggest that there should be a track there. That does look reasonably fresh. When I say fresh, um, you know, it could have been there for 
many years but my map is possibly a bit older than the existence of that particular track um, I'm heading up there and there should have been a track on this side but I haven't come across it yet so uh, let's continue like I said the push bike is making this a lot faster although time for me is beginning to get um, as it always seems to really <laughs> you know a bit precious and um, you know I don't have much left in the uh, gas tank shall I say for time to keep pursuing this so I've got to turn up the goods pretty fast or I'll have to abort Well, if my uh, map reading is correct, or interpretation, it looks like I've got to head down here to the bridle way. Yeah, there is a uh, horseshoe prints along here. So, that should indicate a good omen that we're heading towards a bridle way. I'm no uh, tracker, but uh, even I can see that's uh, horseshoe prints. I have Brown Willie behind me, which is uh, the actual highest point in Cornwall and Rao Tor behind that. And then that would conclude my expedition from east to west. Obviously, this is just one little section I'm doing here now. And I'm doing it on a bike. Um, the, wood uh, the wood line is actually in front of me. You're looking behind out to open moorland. Leaving the wood block, you can see uh, Jamaica Inn just on the rise there. And then you're going around to open moorland over there. As we said, Brown Willie and Rao Tor behind that. And then we have a track with moorland in front of it. And now I'm just going to try and determine the actual footpath. And then I'll be happy to conclude this when I next come back. And um, it won't be on that which has made it extremely easy so far. I've now hit the bridle way proper and it's, uh, if you were allowed to take a dirt bike on this track, it would be a, de uh, a, a dream track. But obviously you're not allowed to, no mo motor vehicles, only horses and push bikes. Um, it may be a case I'll have to walk uh, uh, most of this. It may be beyond what I can cycle, but I'm gonna give it a go, I'm here. It's a bit tight in between the uh, bushes and uh, my wheel frames have got clogged up with mud so the actual brakes are making a little bit of a grinding noise because obviously this uh, mud is full of granite uh, particles so it's a bit like sandpaper but boy whoa I'm interested to see where the footpath now joins this Could possibly have done with a uh, mountain bike I know what people would say but this bike can just about cope with this sort of thing at this kind of speed obviously it's got big balloon tires which helps and a fair bit of uh, ground clearance but yes it is by no means uh, designed for any of this I'm not suggesting that but um, as with uh, Everything I say, don't do as I do, <laughs> you know, um, I'm just doing this for my own entertainment. I would hate to, for you to bring any of your nice new shiny brakes down tracks like this. Well here it is uh, boys and girls, this was my uh, objective to get here to find the footpath. And obviously it goes over there and would join a road over there. I could come back to uh, Jamaica Inn and make my way across the moors but it says here it's been uh, diverted legally diverted so there's still a route but you will have to follow a slightly alternative route that's been set up for uh, whatever reason um, I'm not about to find out I don't have time now but I can see my objective so um, I can get here 
and if it takes me half hour just to uh, pick my way where I need to go, so be it. And there you go, if you're coming down here on holiday, I can see you, but you more than likely won't see me. That's just the way I like it. I think they call it stealthy. But yeah, this is the A30, main A30 into Cornwall. So most of you guys will be travelling on this road. But guess what guys? I'm heading back into the woods. I need to get away from this traffic noise. A quick little historic point of view. The road I'm actually on now, or a small bit here, was the old A30 before the actual um, new one was built. And uh, you can still, just in patches, see the remnants of its existence. And it was just a small two lane road at that time. So you can imagine the uh, traffic and bottlenecks, which is why this one was built. But uh, it serves as a quick reminder of how remote and quiet, and indeed what a backwater of Cornwall was, only so far back as possibly 30 years ago. Well, there you have it, a cat's eye. And I wonder how many lorries and cars uh, have rolled over that one. And same as that one. And you can see them going all the way up the road. And where I'm to, in the middle of the road, this time of year, I possibly would be uh, giving myself a death sentence. But uh, you can only imagine the traffic that used to come down here. Now it's peaceful calm quiet you look at the flowers you've got all these pink flowers here look at that absolutely beautiful where once there were car hgv lorries agricultural you know holiday traffic you know all the pollution and everything from that this is now growing into an oasis for wildlife and that just goes to serve as a lesson that you know nature can come back well I've just come out of the lane we went into to find that um, old A30 bit of a road I'm rehydrating it's absolutely scorching and I am sweating my bits and bobs off here and um, I'm glad I wore uh, army combat, as you can see, if you can, there. I don't know if you saw that or not, but um, yeah, I'm wearing combat because it allows me to breathe. If I was in a pair of jeans now, by God, I would have been virtually strangulated in them. But yeah, I'm rehydrating and then I'm going to push on through home. And when you next speak to me, I'll be at home just wrapping all this up. Right, I'm nearly uh, back to the part of the road which is going to involve cars. Just like to say, if you're ever out on the lanes and the roads around here in Cornwall, um, I'll just show you a little something. That's a high vis there, and I've got a high vis um, uh, band there on the back of my rucksack. If you're wearing a rucksack, your high vis isn't really doing that much that there somebody can clearly see those fluorescent colors and it just gives them a chance to avoid me and you know helps me go home in one piece and I'd strongly suggest you put something high vis yourself I'm back home and that was a thoroughly hot and tiring cycle back home but I was grinning from ear to ear I've uh, linked the dots on that trail it's fantastic now in my mind that I possibly don't even need to take any navigational aids. I will do take a map and compass because obviously I'll be going up onto the high ground and you should always have a contingency plan if the weather was to miraculously change even on the hottest days of the year. But any in any case, I could just about, I can do that now uh, trail with no navigational aids, if everything's with me. 
I feel totally, totally stoked with that. It's, um, you know, given me that confidence boost that I can set off at five in the morning and I can reach my goal and I'm satisfied now that I can do it and I'm not going to lose vast chunks of time trying to navigate and find trails and find paths that possibly don't match up and as we've seen there's one part I can see my um, goal I've got to get to Jamaica in and I can see the start point the public footpath but it states there that it's been diverted so I will have to um, you know do some minor navigation but ultimately I can see where I've got to get to which you know is uh, a big aid for myself I hope you enjoyed that I've also had a little look around at a wild camp spot so I think I'm sorted there so it's been a productive afternoon and a bit of exercise for myself and um, that brings me on to the point that a very close friend of mine has had a, situ a health scare regarding his heart and he's had to have stents. And we're childhood friends and on top of that, um, you know, he was my best man at my wedding and, you know, I do a little bit of work for him now and again and occasionally we meet up. That has led me to evaluate how I look after myself and um, ultimately I left the desert when I was in the desert I was at 11 stone I'm now banging on the door of 14 stone so I do realize that um, it may be time for me just to you know I possibly won't lose weight or much weight but I possibly need to possibly monitor what I'm uh, putting inside my body now because I do not just for myself, I have a, a younger wife and I have two young kids. So that's what I was going to touch on as well. That, um, you know, just being outside and doing physical exercise and walking and just pushing yourself past that little bit of a comfort uh, zone can possibly be an aid to you um, and your health and mental well being as well. But um, that obviously comes with uh, a disclaimer that, you know, you need to um, be physically able to do that. And if you feel you need to get checked out by your GP doctor to give you that OK for you to go and do some strenuous exercise, you know, don't be afraid to do it. Because, uh, like I say, my friend was one of these that... Um, he never had anything wrong with him, um, he was never really ill and um, he complained of a little pain in his shoulder, um, continued working, continued working till it got to the point he thought do you want to see the doctor and then they kept him in because um, he had other symptoms which he wasn't really talking about that much which indicated that he had some heart issues. So he's on the mend now and um, like I said, it's just been a little bit of an eye opener and uh, it shows that we all have to take care of ourselves. So uh, on that note, I'm just going to leave this. This is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. I hope I've kind of given you a little bit of um, a flavour for going out and finding out um, little about how you can get some little adventures in your local area, parish or indeed county, you don't have to travel massive distance or invest lots of money in it. It's all out there outside your back door and I hope you take advantage of it. Um, and I'm certainly uh, enjoying doing it in my area. And you can see, like you say, when I found that uh, public footpath sign, I was grinning from ear to ear. You know, that was the last dot in the puzzle. So thanks very much for watching. I've waffled on enough, so I'm going to shoot off, have a bath and get ready for work. And this is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. I'll catch you out on the trail.